promised. I'm going to tell you the tale of flower delivery. So, as I mentioned before, um, the, the, the golden jewel of Shadowrun. Uh, brief rundown, uh, basically think uh, a future, like, cyberpunk dystopian future type setting where cyber technology and, like, hacking stuff with your brain is on the rise, and then add magic elves and orcs and dragons in there, and, and it, it's, it's, throw it all into a blender and put it on amazing, and, 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 and that's what you get. So to, to give you a brief rundown here, uh, here's the group I'm dealing with. We, we, we have a, uh, Elven Decker, who never decked, um, I guess he just wasn't that kind of Decker, um, Modeled after uh, uh, a, a good idea of what he was originally supposed to be was is, is think uh, uh, John McClane from from the Die Hard series. Just 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 a, a a guy that smokes too much, drinks too much, constantly has a headache. That that, that sort of thing. Um, moving on from there, we had um, the 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 uh, amply named uh, Jet Black. Now Jet was an interesting character because. He was originally a character that I played uh, f briefly and really enjoyed playing, but eventually I, I retired him because the plot was is he, he agreed to do a secret government uh, project, which the end result was, was he ended up getting cloned about, I believe it was, eight times. And so this guy wasn't so much playing um, my character so much as playing one of the clones of his character. This one in particular had 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 a, a he either had the squatter or the low lifestyle I can't remember, but his thing was is he had a super high uh, resistance to drugs, so he was constantly doing drugs but rarely if ever feeling the effects of them, at least to begin with. It kind of got away from it later, and then finally there was uh, the 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 black uh, bishi who, who who was a physical adept, which which if you don't know what that is, think uh, like a, a a monk from D and D. They they they, they channel key through their body to do amazing feat. Uh, who wielded a big sword and was amply named Sephiroth. Jet black and Sephiroth. You you, you could say we liked anime. So anyway, um, I set the mission out right where they had to assassinate a, a, a Mafia Don. I remember, it's around the time when uh, Family Guy had the um, Don's wedding. So we were going through the, on this, the day of your daughter's wedding, just constantly. So the DM tells us we're going to go kill Don on his daughter's wedding day. Surprise. Now... At the time, I was playing the game uh, Hitman 2, so I basically just wholesale ripped off one of the Hitman missions. The very same mission in question where you have to assassinate a Mafia Don. I felt I'd done it very well, you know, I'd set everything up. You know, they go there, there's the, the big gate around the, you know, the, the, the grounds, which the grounds eventually led to a you know, big flashy house where this Don lived. I, I, I casually mentioned that there was <clears throat> uh, uh, a van there for flower delivery. And it started off really good because uh, Sephiroth went up there, handed the guy a stack full of Yun, and was like, dude, leave your uniform, leave the flowers, and go. And you know what? He was like, all right, fine. Took the uniform off, dropped the flowers, got in his van, left. It was about this time that the elf, uh, Linnaeus, I believe his name was, if I didn't mention that earlier, he gets it in his head that um, he's going to follow the flower guy. No idea why he's going to follow the flower guy. He just decides, I'm going to follow the flower guy. So he jumps in his car, his, his, his Euro car Westwind, which was decked out like a tank, mind you. Big ol' auto cannon on it, thick plated armor, bulletproof windshields. So he starts tailing this, this 
This flower guy, for no reason. So I'm thinking, all right, all right, fine. You, you, you want to get involved in the campaign? Fine, fine. So um, that's when I decided that uh, 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 the, the, the flower guy was going to turn out to be a rival assassin. You know, they, they caught him off guard, and you know he figured, well, you know, these guys are, are going to fail, so he'd just come back later, you know, and, and if they succeed, you know, maybe he's just going to come back later, kill him, and take credit for the kill anyway. You know, a, a, a simple idea. He eventually cornered him at a traffic jam because he couldn't roll well enough to, like, overtake the guy. Not that they were in, like, a high-speed chase or anything. He was just blatantly following him. But he could roll well enough to just keep following him. So, where they engage in a firefight in downtown Seattle in gridlock conditions. Now, I'm not too experienced with gridlock, but every time you hear about gridlock, what do you usually see? Like, news helicopters flying all around talking about how Oh, it's gridlock that's backed up on the 4L5 and that sort of thing. When a firefight breaks out, specifically, he gets out of his car, doesn't use the big shiny cannon on his car because, well, he didn't want his baby to get dented. So he gets out, pulls out his handgun, and starts firing on this flower truck. Now, I'm like, oh, okay, well, this assassin is... is is gonna, you know, respond in kind. So he, you know, I, I rule he starts looking for his gun because he was, you know, he didn't have his gun up front because you don't want to do that when you go into a Don's house. So I have him start looking for his gun. I can make a couple of rolls. The next round of combat, he scores very well, just, you know, like, I was back when Shadowrun had target numbers, and he rolled, um, I think it was a 57. His flower delivery van's armored, but you know what? No, it's it's a 57. That's going through the armor. That's going through everything. That's just going through his skull. He's dead. About this time, Lone Star shows up. Because there was a, there was a firefight in downtown Seattle on the news. So he decides, he since he doesn't want his precious tank to get you know, destroyed, which, you know, would have been a better place to hide. No, no, he decides he's going to hide in the flower delivery van. And that's what I'm thinking to myself, all right, fine. This is a well-known hit, man. Maybe he lives out of his van, maybe he doesn't. But this thing's filled with arms. I, 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 I rule it's filled with arms, Speci specifically explosives. So here he is in a van filled with explosives, while Lone Star agents are on the outside, riddling it with AK fire. Now, at this time, you're probably wondering, but DM, what's going on with the Don? Well, here's what's going on with the Don. Jet, our orc, feels so overdressed. So, there it was, my newly made orc character. I was sure I got the formula right this time. Absolutely no cybernetics. Why would you need that in Shadowrun? Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing ever. He's gonna sneak in as the flower delivery guy. So he donned the he dons the flower delivery uniform. Now, as I mentioned before, the flower delivery guy was a human. Jet was an almost six and a half foot tall orc. He had like an eight body at the time, so he was pretty pretty muscular. Cramming himself into a human-sized uniform. Cramming the human-sized hat on his head. Taking his big shotgun and cramming it inside the flower case, which I was okay with that. We all, we all remember that scene from Terminator. It was pretty awesome. Terminator 2, sorry. It, it was an awesome scene. Standard shadow running. Get your shit. Get there. And then figure out how to get inside. I think I took the most reasonable approach, and I went through the side door. I'm just going to go right along with what he's doing. He'll take the back, I'll take the front. Sure, yeah, I'll get dressed up, and I'll get ready to go. 
You ever been overexcited? Because that's exactly what I think happened when I tried to formulate my plan. So they start walking up to the house. Uh, I believe Sephiroth decides he's going to try and come in from the side, because I mentioned there was a side door to the, to the kitchen that, you know, another delivery guy would go in and deliver food into the kitchen. So he starts making his way to that. He goes up there, he starts picking the lock on that door, maybe the door was unlocked or not. He, anyway, he, he gets inside and he starts sneaking around. Jet is having none of this. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go in through the front. I've got the shotgun ready there in the flowers. So I turn to the DM and say, yeah, I'm just going to burst through the door and say flower delivery. I should really choose my words more carefully. He walks up to the front door, kicks the door open, yells out, flower delivery. And then randomly fires his shotgun off three times. He specifically tells me he fires it off three times. So, so try to imagine a giant orc kicking down your door, screaming flower delivery, and then firing randomly. He didn't, he didn't say he fires at the nearest target. He didn't say, he didn't ask me if there was a target. He just says he fires. I think I was, was in the kitchen, but, you know, adjacent to the room. And, you know, I guess witness that the doors fly open from the inside. This giant orc screaming flower delivery in a suit that does not fit him. <laughs> Firing his bouquet. <laughs> It did not end well. Suddenly has gone. Immediately gunned down. <laughs> it ended up working out a lot better than it should have. But, oh my god. I was sure I just killed my character. Right out the gate. And it goes down. I do what any, any assist, you know, any good role player does. And I, I assist my comrade. So I pulled out the uh, orc-sized vial of Psycho my human character, stab it into my thigh and let her rip, and that's the beginning of my psycho addiction. <laughs> so, so four rounds per turn or something crazy like that. I run out there, I slide him into cover, and I sit there and shoot until I'm empty. <laughs> Of course, I still have another turn, so I run for cover. <laughs> uh, he's surprised. Everyone's surprised that, that, that he has survived this onslaught. He's not... He's, fa he's doing fairly good. So, he starts running through this house, firing his shotgun at everything he can. The Fizz Ad's like, alright, what can I do? So we were going room by room in the house. And uh, I had the brilliant idea of, hey, I'll jiggle the handle to see if the door is unlocked. Well, open the door to a shotgun blast to the face. You know, it's a video game, so, or a role-playing game, so you can survive that kind of thing. But, uh, killed him, I took a shotgun, and that's how I opened every door after that. I jiggle the handle, and I shoot the door open. <laughs> Get me once, shame on you. Get me twice, shame on me. He starts sneaking around where he finds uh, the keys to to the fancy sports car in in the garage in front of the house. So he starts making his way to the garage. Meanwhile, the orc has like gotten all the guards in this guy's house, chasing him through the house, riddling him with AK fire. He, he eventually kicks out, he eventually gets into the room where the Don is, which is on the second floor, um, kind of overlooking the, 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 the front of the house. Uh, why he was still there after knowing that there was an insane madman running through his house with a shotgun, I'll never know, but um, I guess he thought his guards would take care of it. So he sees the Don, quickly just, you know, shotgun to the face, Drops the Don. He, he, he wasn't anything special. About this point in time, he hears the banging on the door of, uh, of, of, of uh, the guards trying to get in. I say, they're going to break through this do door down. You better do something. He's like, all right. He takes his entire stash of cocaine, which he spent a lot of money on it. So he had a lot of cocaine. 
a lot of cocaine. Cocaine was really just the drug of choice by default. I mean, what else are you going to have an orc be on that would just be such a weird juxtaposition? He should have been on more Psycho. It would have made him far more effective in combat, but, yeah, you know, it worked out. He dumps it, like, on the desk. Like, like I'm thinking, oh, cool, he's, he's going to do some something Tony Montana style, you know? No, no, no. He hides behind the desk, and when the guards come in, he specifically angles his shots so as to kick cocaine dust everywhere. So I thought it was going to be the best plan in the world. Why not deck the entire top of the desk with cocaine and then just shoot through it? That'll make them as high as I am. Never let Jet let aid you in doing drugs. That's the moral of the story there. That's, that's not the injection method of choice for anyone, nor should you try this at home. So now we have coked up angry guards with AKs who have just found their boss dead. Oh, and about six of their allies just got gunned down because he just opened fire with his shotgun like crazy. I think he might also had one of the AKs at this point in time which he was also firing into them. But realizing there were too many guards, he decides discretion is the better part of valor. About this time, um, the Fizzad finally got the car and is pulling it out of the garage. He comes screaming around and kind of waits in front of the house, waiting for this guy, figuring, what's going on? He's about to call him when he comes flying out of the second story window, lands on the hood of the car, um, looks at him and says, just screams, drive. I'm still not sure how I survived the fall. Of course... The fact is, there was so much uh, going through my system at that point that I wouldn't have noticed if I died. So, yeah, just yell, go, and off we went. And who knows how I survived the, the explosion that happened later. And where do they end up? At Gridlock. Because I'm trying to salvage something of this, and I'm trying to, you know, get the party back together. Um, about this point in time, the, uh, the, the, the van is looking pretty ragged, as several Lone Star officers have opened up with AK fire. I realized back then I gave a guys a lot of AKs, which probably says a lot more about me than I wanted to know. So they're opening up with AK fire, and he decides he's going to make a break for it. So he waits for a lull in the shooting. Kicks the back door of this flower delivery van open and runs out. And he's. That would have been fine, but he says as he's running out, he pulls the pin on a grenade and throws it back in the van. The explosion that followed was massive. And, uh, 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 in, insanely massive, as, as I ruled that, you know, the, the explosives went up, and as it was currently in gridlock, um, the next several cars also went up. Um, he should have died. I should have just straight up said, y you're dead after this, but I was feeling merciful at the time, and I let him live. The Lone Star agents were not so lucky. Uh, they go up. Like, immediately, they go up. So, that's when the, the, the rest of the group arrive. They come driving around the corner, right into an explosion. At least your pants stayed on. At least my pants stayed on. <laughs> You know, I don't want to. I don't want to see my party go up in, in in one one you know big explosion. I should have. I should have. I should have just said you know, yeah, whatever. Throw my hands up. Like yeah, y'all blow up. But I was feeling nice. So they pick themselves up and, and get back together and survey the carnage that 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 has left, 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 left up before them. A fairly sizable crater is now in downtown Seattle. More Lone Star is on the way. But uh, at this point, I've, I've 
I've had enough. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to end it. So I'm like, you know what? You look over and you see an unattended Lone Star Squad car that's still in good condition. They kind of look at each other and figure, eh, we've had enough for now. They jump in the squad car and drive off in the confusion. And that's the story of flower delivery. I guess if uh, I guess if there was a moral of the story, it is 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 don't be afraid to 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 kill the players when they do something stupid. But also, when they split the party, and and when they go off and decide to tail the flower delivery guy for no reason, you know, something good can come of it. You, you can you know keep on your toes and and. Things will go good, and, and, and you'd be surprised what kind of stories you can see. That's all I gotta say, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll see you next time. This is this is uh, the, the the DM, and, and keep your dice rolling. I do remember all that cocaine. Mm-hmm. Lost a lot of that cocaine. Became the signature. You forgot to say how he jacked up on Psycho before he went through with his flower delivery. Uh. Uh, true, true. Were you jacked up on Psycho? I don't remember you being jacked up on Psycho. It was Jet. If there was ever an opportunity to, he was always jacked up on Psycho. <laughs> That's true. That's true. This was, this was, this was before he kind of got into that habit. This was back when he was still uh, somewhat a character. <sighs> Could a non-character slay a dragon in the most epic mural painted on the side of a van ever? didn't slay the dragon, the dragon slayed him. <laughs> <laughs>